When I arrived in 2001, the Russian podyest, or apartment entrance, could be a very scary place. The entrance is so scary, what might await me behind that door? Russia, then and now. Yeah, hi, welcome to uh, American in Russia, and I'm Mark. Uh, first of all, welcome back to my Then and Now series where I speak about how things were in Russia in my eyes when I arrived in 2001 and how they've changed. Now, today I'm going to speak about the Russian podiest, which in English might be translated as the apartment entryway. Actually, apartments are set up differently uh, here than they usually are in the West. Here, along the length of an apartment complex, and many complexes can be you know, quite long, there are many entrances, but there is no way to get from one entrance to another. You go into an entryway. From here on in, I'm just going to refer to it by its Russian name, which is Podyesk. Like I said, loosely translated apartment entryway. But you go into this Podyesk. It's an outside door, a big metal door. You open it. And there are stairs and or an elevator. On each floor, there are usually two, three, or four doors that open into apartments. Uh, there may also be something called a karman, or an English translation would be pocket, but I won't get into that at this time. In the West, you can go into an entrance. You go upstairs or on an elevator, and on each floor, there's typically a very long corridor going all the way to your right and also all the way to your left. The apartment doors are on each side of that corridor not facing each other, but on each side of the corridor. Well, let's go get back to the Podiesto and back to the year 2001. Well, my first experience with a Russian Podiesto was when I visited my future wife. She lived in a nine-story, kind of a typical later Soviet building made from prefabricated concrete panels. Now, so many were made back then. We look at them and they look like big gray monoliths. Starting with the entry door was a bit of an eye-opening experience. The entry door at street level was a heavy, wide steel door. To open it, there was an electronic panel where you inserted a uh, kind of a flat metal key with a pattern of punched holes. This would activate the lock and you'd very poorly lit corridor, low hanging pipes overhead, in her building, you then turned 90 degrees, climbed a short flight of stairs, and in front of you were the mailboxes. Some of them were badly charred and burned, although they were metal. Others had the doors ripped off. Graffiti was smeared on most of them, and also, strangely, a large collection of pieces of chewing gum were pressed all over them, sometimes in very intricate patterns. To your left was the elevator. Now the elevator was quite small, maybe big enough for three adults, and the condition was not very good. I think a more bleak space is not often encountered in life. More bleak than the Russian Podies. I will say one positive purpose that the Podies fulfills is that of contrast. When you open the door into a Russian apartment, even a very plain apartment suddenly looks like a warm, welcoming wonderland compared to that cold, damp, dark Podiest you entered from. So yeah, there is always that. Well, we lived in three more Podiests before we moved into a private home. I'm going to talk a little bit about these three places. One of our apartments was also in a nine-story Soviet block of flats, also made from prefabricated concrete panels. Though that place, I'd say, was older than the one my wife lived in when I first visited. I would say this apartment, the older one, 
uh, was in a building that was built maybe 30 to 35 years ago. And that was a very old looking 30 to 35 year old building. The first time that we came to look at the apartment, I was genuinely scared when I entered the Pug Yes and made up my mind that there was no way I could live there. After coming through the large metal street door, the low ceiling corridor was longer, narrower, darker, and more overhead pipes than that of my first Pug Yes I was in. It looked like something right out of some dystopian dark chase scene under a city. It was like a crime scene moments before the actual crime happened. You take a left, up a short staircase, and then the husks of what used to be mailboxes. Elevator to the left. The elevator door and the actual floor uh, uh, of each landing was usually either a, a two inch or five centimeter step up or down. It was never flush. The buttons, at least those still there, no longer had numbers on them. Many had been burned and melted, I don't know, by someone with a lighter, I guess. To be fair, usually someone had written the floor numbers next to the buttons using a Sharpie. You hoped the floor you wanted was one of the ones with a still intact button. If not, you'd have to stick your finger into a hole where the button top used to be and hope that you hit something solid rather than live electrical wires, really. Here I'm going to just play a very short sound file so you can hear how the old elevator sounded. I swear that I thought that they had big monkeys on the roof with big crank handles who cranked these elevators up and down. Now, typically, you will make it to your floor and you'll step either up or down to step out of the elevator onto the floor. As it turned out, the apartment was just what we were looking for and we traded our current apartment along with some cash to buy this one. Yeah, sometime I'll, I'll talk about some ways some of the really creative real estate deals that things, how you'd make a deal back in the, these early days. There were virtually no mortgages. Anyhow, the elevator looks and sounds like crap, but typically it works okay. At least ours did. This was a very good thing because walking up the stairs in the Pugues rather than the elevator can be an unpleasant experience. Maybe a couple of floors below you during the winter a group of toughs were hanging out there to keep out of the cold. Hundreds of snuffed out cigarette butts on the ground, along with plenty of one and a half liter empty plastic beer bottles. The lights might be burnt out or, or broken for a floor or so, so it's even possible that you may need to step over a drunk who's passed out on the stairs. In the words of Dan Sauter, an American comedian, Russians are the scariest white people. <laughs> They've earned it. I'm so scared of them that I guarantee you if I was lost. I would say things to Russians I knew about some of these Pudyas and might get the following response. Well, without the Pudyas, how will you get to your apartment? Now, they thought that they had me with this logic, but they underestimated my deep levels of sarcasm because I would say, how about a tall ladder? or maybe a large balloon, perhaps being shot out of a cannon, or maybe the use of large trampolines. None of these would be nearly as scary as the current podiests. Well, listen, I have several other podiest stories I'd like to share along with other related information about podiests, but this video will be too long, I think. I'll do a Russian podiest part two in order to finish out this subject. So this episode really only spoke of the then, but the part two video will address both the then and the now, because I, I don't want to just show the bad without showing how it's changed. This is supposed to be 
contrast then and now. And there is definitely a big contrast. So please tune in next week for part two, and I'll finish it up, and you'll see things more as they are now. Well, that's all I have for now. So until my next video, puck off.